<laughs> See, Rug Delver versus Bug. Chris Marshall on your right, Pupula on your left. Should be a fun one here. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I haven't really gotten to see Chris play very much. He doesn't really get to, you know, full-time job. He's got a wife and kids. Yeah. A life. Yes. Outside of the Matrix. Uh, but life it's in the a Matrix. damn shame when that happens. Yeah, life <laughs> in the Matrix isn't so bad itself. So. <laughs> uh, he actually, I just talked to him this round uh, as I had the, uh, the pleasure of the break. Um, he was actually like really hoping to get into this top eight. He really wants to win here. Not only to make this top eight, which would be sweet, but what he really wants, what he's got his eyes set on is the Invitational yeah. in Somerset. You know, kind of in his backyard, really, and um, a chance to play Legacy for, for higher stakes on a bigger stage, you know. Uh, so he really needs that qualification, and uh, easiest way to get it is just for him to top eight here. Yeah, spike it. Yeah. That's all you gotta do. He's definitely on his way. At yeah, 6 that's for I mean, sure. Once this match can probably double draw. Yeah. Very so, close, getting close. But he's got a man standing in his way, and the man standing in his way is also 6 0. He's got to turn one death right shot and does Chris Marshall. So we are underway here in round number seven. Chris going untapped. He's going to take a draw step. We see a. Okay, that is a expensive land. Yes. <laughs> that's, what that is. that's a pretty expensive lightning bolt, too. And he's already cast, uh, you know, <laughs> more than my life's worth uh, yes. in the first uh, turn of the game. No, but. Uh, I will say that the the play versus draw, you know, the die roll is super, super important for the Rug Delver deck. Having lost that draw, uh, you know, he gets to, uh, or Chris Marshall gets to play that death right, you know, which Chris Pula has to bolt instead of using a ponder or maybe playing a Delver or holding up, uh, you know, stifle, those, those types of things that he really wants to be doing. He really gets to establish his mana base when, as we've said before, Rug Delver is basically a mana denial deck. Mm -hmm. Glorified man in Isle deck. It does a. It, it does some other things too. Yeah. yeah. Not a ton of other things though. It really wants to mess with your mana. Take a look at Marshall's deck list here. He's got four copies of Deathrite Shaman, four Dark Confidant, four Tarmogoy, two Snapcaster Major Tooth, and Daily Click as his creature base. Spells, Brainstorm, Swords of Plowshares, Thought Seize, Inquisition of Co's Life, one Ponder, one Counter Spell, four Jace the Vine Sculptor, and two Liliana the Veil. So this is definitely one of those good card legacy decks. Yes. As we're going to see Chris start off with a Brainstorm. Yeah. These uh, these types of decks basically are like if I can have my mana and like get to the mid to late game, then like my powerful cards are going to take over. Mm -hmm. But the mana is uh, a little sketchy at times, and you know if uh, the Rug Delver deck can disrupt that mana base, then it's actually going to have quite a bit of difficulty since its mana costs are so spread out. And we look at Chris Pakula's deck. He is you can you can see the old school in in this deck. It yep. is it is just all fours straight up with the full dazes and pierces, and then one chain lightning, one scour to fill out so that he can get down to 18 lands. All right, so Tropical Island was searched for via Polluted Delta, and we'll see what he's gonna go with here. We see a Nimble Mongoose is the choice of the day. Chris Marshall gonna tap, he's gonna draw. We got a ponder. Yeah, um, the Nimble Mongoose, one of the harder threats to deal with. Tarmogoyf, one of the most efficient answers yeah. to uh, Nimble Mongoose. So, Chris Pakula now looking for an evasive threat or a way to deal with that Tarmogoyf. You guys used to see the Tarmogoyf die on the screen. We'll slide the Tarmogoyf die on the screen just a little farther for you guys so you can see that it is a 3-4 moving forward. And it could get a little bit bigger. You see Pakula has drawn a Stifle, going to play a Volcanic Island. So, I mean, three men... The, Chris Marshall has three lands. I shouldn't say three mana because one is a fetch land and Kula can stifle that. But, um, ooh, a Tarmogoyf of his own. That's not too bad. But that that is sort of the point where you're, uh, you're, you, the Rug Delver doesn't, player doesn't want the bug player to get to that point. Yes. You know, it, this game is already sort of slipping out of Kula's hands. Having been on the draw, having to spend his first turn bolting a death right, having no real follow up. And, you, you know, no double wasteland and stifle draw after that, which mm -hmm. is the type of thing that you need to pull back ahead uh, when when you are that far behind. So Cool is going to have to sort of fight on a different axis, just like swarm some creatures and try and overwhelm the Tarm Life, which looks like that's what he is doing. He's got um, a Delver. He just pondered, so you know, presumably that's going to flip. And he has a Tarm Life in his hand uh, to cast next turn, still holding up that stifle for the fetch line. So definitely not a bad turn for Pula, but he's still going to have to um, to make things happen yeah. and soon. 
we see a, a source of flashers among other cards over there for Marshall. He's got a counter spell in his hand as well. And he's going to serve in with Tarmogoy. It makes me believe that he probably has another one. Yep. He might think that, um, you know, he can use his swords to plow shares, but unless he wastelands that volcanic first, uh, his fetch line is actually going to get stifled and he's not going to be able to cast that swords and plow shares. stifle fast enough. Yep. Which is actually what we see happen here. Now, do you want to spend your. Uh, is another fetch land. Okay. Oh, okay, there you go. So he's got the white anyway. And he's happy to trade that fetch land for a stifle now because, you know, he's, he had the backup anyway. That's one less card that Bakula has. You can't use that stifle later on, say, a key, Jace activation, or what have you. And, or just like, pitch it to a force will put it back with a brainstorm. You know, it's just like, I'll take this one for one with this land I didn't need anyway. Mm -hmm. And by cracking it first before playing his other land, he really baited that. I mean, what's Bakula going to do? Like, not use his stifle there? Yep. Uh, but um, he definitely did not get the maximum value, and Marshall playing that turn quite uh, efficiently, effectively. And here we see a Forcer will draw, and he kept that on top to flip the Delver, but Delver's gone. Yeah, Long no, gone. No flips today. So now no Mongols are going to come across for one. Ping. Here comes Tarmogoy, so they can stare at each other for a little while. As Marshall cannot cast a counter spell in this hand due to the Bayou and Underground Sea being his lands that are on tap, he's going to draw a scrub land for the turn. And you see Ponder, counter spell, wasteland, and scrub land. So How Ponder awesome to help search. How awesome is the scrub land, Bayou, wasteland as three of his five lands? Yeah. Just don't cast a counter spell in his hand. Like these are the types of uh, things we're talking about when these mana bases are uh, a little sketchy. Yeah, and I mean, the land is great in fetch lands and all these dual lands and everything. You know, it makes it so that you can have a beautiful mana base, but you can also you know have some trouble, especially when wasteland is as prominent as it is in the format. Yeah, and like if you draw the lands that you fetch in corner case scenarios as like one of your first few lands that you need for mana, then it can definitely be awkward. Now. Here, uh, Gula has basically no option but to force a will to source the plasters on his Tarmogoyf, and I believe his last card, or one of his last cards, is uh, a Lightning Bolt, which, you know, when your, your Tarmogoyf attacks uh, Marshall and threatens to bounce off of Marshall's, then the, the Lightning Bolt can finish it off, so... Actually, not a bad sequence here for, from Pakula, and we see Chris Marshall once again not being able to hold up Counterspell, but he does not play into that sequence, just taking the attack very well played. Yeah, and I was wondering if he was actually going to be uh, be scared to block or not here, as Pakula kind of sent in. It's almost like a bluff attack, right? Where it's just like, all right, do I have Lightning Bolt or not? Do you dare find out? Like, yeah. how bad do you need this Tarmogoyf? The answer is pretty bad <laughs> yeah. right now. Not only is it holding off uh, Chris's Tarmogoyf, but also the Nimble Mongoose, and, um, you know, it, even if he doesn't have the Lightning Bolt, he can still make that attack. That, yep. As you said, it's almost a free roll attack because if Marshall uh, is afraid of that Lightning Bolt and then takes it, what's he going to do? Attack back? Like, you're not racing the coolest board. Mm -hmm. So it, it is a, a very nice attack and a very nice block as well. So Wasteland's going to come. Tropical Island. Time to go bye-bye. So yeah, Thoughts he's with the draw set for Marshall. I think Marshall's thought is, you know, he's basically putting Chris on Lightning Bolt. So, you know, should I thought to the Lightning Bolt or Counterspell Lightning Bolt? Should I be proactive and take two or be reactive and just counter it? Yep, and it looks like he's choosing the reactive route. And, and there's the thought scour. one of Thought Scour. I like Thought Scour as a one of. It's, it's you know, I mean, it's a, just a cycler, so you're not losing that much if you randomly draw it. But then the value of being able to surprise, pump your Nimble Mongoose more mm -hmm. than your opponent thought you could uh, mid-combat can be really, uh, really powerful. And you can use it with Brainstorm and Ponder as a sort of semi-shuffle effect to uh, get rid of unwanted cards. So you see the Tarmer Goyce, they run into each other, a little bit of standoff. Chris tries that Lightning Bolt that we knew he had, and Marshall has the Counterspell that we knew he had as well. Yep. So, we see Marshall draw a card for the turn. It's a Tropical Island. Marshall, again, does have four Jace the Mind Scoffers to draw to, which can break this parity as you see Pupila draws a Spell Pierce for the turn. Yeah, he does have four spell pierces and four dazes. Wow, he okay, is that's a different amount. build. Yeah. Uh, wow. Speaking of which, look at that. And actually, yep, he's gonna lead with thoughts. Yep. He perfectly waited for the thought seize. There was no reason to cast it earlier. Jig is up. Get that out of here. Mm -hmm. And Hase is home. So now you're gonna see that land. And here's the Jason Mind Sculptor. And this is a card that we've seen it before. We'll see it again. Turns him around, Fate Seal, going this way. Takes a look at the top guard, puts that on the bottom, and we'll see if 
If Piccolo wants to sacrifice that fetch line, I'll leave it there. Says he's happy to leave it there. There's a stifle off the top. Once again, more cards that are really good in the early game when you're trying to tempo them out, but are just comically bad top uh -huh. decks uh, once you enter this, you know, turn seven and eight phase of the game. So now Jace may do its brainstorm thing or it might do its fate seal thing. We're gonna see. Yeah, I mean, it's at five, so you kind of want to push it to seven so that um, a sort of alpha with both the creatures at it plus a bolt doesn't finish it off. Mm -hmm. Once it's at seven, then theoretically you can start brainstorming, but once it's at seven, you're like, hey, it's already at seven. Let's, <laughs> let's keep, just let's, try and kill him. Let's yeah. keep going up. <laughs> we got control of his draw step. It's time we're going off the top there for Chris. I feel like Jace might go into a different mode now. But things may change. <laughs> things may change. Thoughtsies. Is the draw here for Marshall? Thoughtseize with uh, a Jace with a ton of counters is actually awesome because you just use it as a removal spell. Bounce a Tarmogoy from then Thoughtseize it away from his hand. Yeah, it seems like Marshall is agreeing with most of your lines here, and there's a stifle to counter that. So that's a. Uh, He's gonna stop it for a turn. Yeah, I mean, a turn might be that might be all that Pikula needs right now, honestly. Yeah. So here's a brainstorm from Gotta Marshall. Gotta find an answer to protect that Jace. Two and three. And I think he just drew three lands off of that. Uh, one was a death right, so that is a chump blocker. Okay. Uh, and then, yeah, a couple lands. I think there was like a tar pit and a fetch, maybe. Oh, and he puts back the thought seize. Oh, I guess he's, you know, not shuffling away, so. Not the biggest of deals there. Uh, and death right shaman, very likely just in chump mode here. Protect the Jace at all costs. You must protect the queen. Absolutely. Here comes Tarmogoyf and friends. I think that's all going to go there. And yet, you see a block here. Going to sacrifice the old mongoose. That's going to get eaten. Jade's going to go down at two. Two Tarmogoyfs for Piccolo, one for Marshall, but Marshall has the breaker there in Jace Mind Sculptor. Yep, I mean, he's... I I have to assume that his his fate... He just draws the uh, thought seize, bounces, and thought seizes now. Um, he has the tar pit as well, so... Theoretically, that could be either Chump Blocker or an Attacker. It looks like, yep, that is a bounce. Yep. And, ooh, he ordered his cards differently. So he actually has the fetch land in his hand, and it looks like he is going to race town. I wonder if he ordered those... It feels like he was surprised when he drew his card that he thought it was a thought seize. That's what yeah. it felt like to me, right? Where he that's like, kind of what it looked yeah, like, he, yeah. He bounced his guy, and then he like, looked at his card, he's like, oh, that's Mr. Rainforest. <laughs> that's, that's what it really honestly felt like. I, I think it may have just been a mistake, and now he's just going to sacrifice this away because he doesn't want to bounce the guy now. Yeah, you sacrifice your chase. Yeah. I mean, much better off brainstorming. But, um, yeah, I mean, without that thought says bouncing the Tarmogoyf is... We may have misread, you know, with what his hand was. We, It could be our mistake on our end, too, that maybe the thought says wasn't in his hand when he was brainstorming. I thought I saw one as well, just like No, it was. <laughs> I, I, I'm pretty confident it was because of the um, the turn before, remember, he went to bounce and Pakula stifled. I think that that line makes sense for him to have the thought seize, but he did put the fetch line on top, and now the... Ooh, this is probably follow Another Jace. Case. Yeah, <laughs> it's the only thing that ever is. Yep. If, you're, if, you're play, if a player is actively choosing to sacrifice their Jace, it's either another Jace or you're dead. Yes. <laughs> Those are the two options. Now we're going to get a brainstorm here. So now Marshall can actually get a little deeper into his deck. You see a Thought Seize, a Death Right Shaman, and a Snapcaster Mage. So now it's not the worst time to actually cast that Thought Seize. Yep. Yep. There's Go. that sequence that uh, he kind of was setting up earlier. And Akula, not much option. The two mana for the Pierce. Yeah, staring at another Spell Pierce. These Spell Pierces are very untimely. Again, Spell Pierce is fantastic when you're this mana denial deck and trying to cut their resources. But Marshall has seven lands in play, which if you're Pikula, that's not something you ever want to happen. Yes, yeah. here's a Delver of Secrets off the top for Chris. We know the last card in his hand is a Spell Pierce, and there's a land as well. So Marshall is going to have more dominance, more decisions to make with Jace the Mind Sculptor in play. Well, I mean, we know that one of his top cards was Snapcaster Mage, so he could very easily just, you know, bounce one of the coolest creatures, Snapcaster, Thoughtseize, and do that again. Or he can uh, look to go the more beatdown route and um, start, you know, like plow the Tarmogoyf, bounce the Delver, attack, and really start trying to get after Pakula's life total, which is fairly low. Sure, just want to close it out. Yeah. I mean, you're you're at seven life, so I mean that is good. You know, the chunks of three are what are important for bolts and delvers and mongies. Like they all hit for three, mm -hmm. so threes and sixes are the magic numbers. Uh, so being at seven is definitely a, a good spot. And sure enough, it is plow. Oh, it's plow delver and bounce tarmogoyf. Sure, I yeah. mean pretty we, much the same thing. We might see we might see bounce tarmogoyf uh, activate tarpit get in. 
Yeah. Um, does uh, fate, fate seal, seal. Okay. that works too. Um, a less aggressive line, but you know, a, you, you have a little safety blanket yeah. of, of being able to uh, control their draws a, a bit. Um, do we know if Marshall has another source of plowshares? Because one line that a lot of players miss in these spots is actually bounce Jace or Jace bounce your own Snapcaster. Sure. For and another rebuy. Sure, sure. Um, I think that that might be a legitimate thing to uh, to look to. Clear that Tarmogoyf out of the way for good, and just and then just start bashing in with everybody. Yeah, yeah. and then you can fate seal, you know, willy nilly. Yep. You don't have to worry about uh, potentially having to bounce a blocker out of the way if you have to attack. No. Lightning bolt off the top here for Picula. Yep. Gonna see. We've seen him make this attack before. See him gonna make it again here. Not sure if he's attacking Jace or. Um, okay, so he is gonna attack Jace, and Marshall is perfectly fine with that, which is very interesting. Yeah, I mean, well, his attack back is lethal. Yeah. So Activate if he's got that bolt, in. he's got to use it on the tar pit. So, so now Picula he, draws another light. I was gonna ball? say he might. That might be. Oh, oh. Okay, death right shot would change. Oh that. yeah, the, the the Jace brainstorm was unbelievable. It was the thought sees. He drew. I think bolt. He actually drew the other bolt. That's pretty good. Is that enough? No, no. I mean, Marshall's at seven. Oh. Like Marshall didn't have that death right shot. Yeah, now Picula has to concede the game. Wow. So actually, if Marshall doesn't have the death right shot there, Picula would have drawn. The Lightning Bolt to win the game, but Marshall did have the Death Right Shaman is going to win game number one here. Well, Marshall did know that he had the Death mm -hmm. Right, so, you know, his line was completely fine. That Brainstorm off of the, the Jace, that turn when he went, like, Sacrifice My Jace to Bounce, followed up with mm -hmm. Jace Brainstorm, that Brainstorm was, like, the Thought Seize to get rid of the uh, Tom Goyf in hand, the Snapcaster Mage to then follow up with the Plow, and then the Death Right to jump on the last turn to win the race. <laughs> That's nice. That is a nice top three. Oh, three spells are good? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Can't, see, can't wait to see what you have to say next. <laughs> so That's why I'm here. That's why they pay me the big bucks yeah. to be here with you. We're going to take a look at the sideboards here. <laughs> Piccolo is going to be on the play of this game. You see two Rough Tumbles, two Fluster Storms, one Pithy Needle, one Tormod Script to go along with two Ancient Grudges, a Pyroblast, a Red Elemental Blast, a Life and Alone, three Submerges, and a Scavenging Ooze. I think the first card he probably goes for is Submerge, and then we kind of go from there. Yeah, uh, as we saw earlier today, uh, you know, in these types of matchups, Charmoglyph, and as we saw just there in that mm -hmm. first game, Charmoglyph is the most important card. Um, you might think that Jace is the most important card, but, you know, that costs four. Pakul is hoping to end the game before then. Don't ever and, want Jace to come in. Yeah, exactly, and Charmoglyph is the one that, he's like the, the bouncer, you know, he stands there with his arms crossed and just says, you know, no, we're, we're going to play a little longer, this Jace is coming in. And um, being able to uh, submerge that blocker, keep attacking at, for free and super uh, tempo gainer, you're still getting, uh, it's still a one for one because you know, you're blanking the draw by putting it on top. So it's a one for one, win, one for one that's super positive, uh, tempo positive, um, definitely one of the more important cards. We talked about blasts earlier. You know, you don't want to dilute your deck too much, but also being able to blast, say, a Jace or a Force of Will on a key Tarmogoyf or uh, something else like that. Uh, you know, a Snapcaster that's going to get a Swords of Plowshares. Blasting those cards is very, very good. So, um, while that it may not be as good against, say, Shardless Bug, I think uh, the Snapcaster deck, uh, the the blasts gain a lot of value. I would definitely like to see those come in. And then finally, Life from the Loam is an interesting one, because not only does it make your Wastelands way better, because you can just lock them, but also it's good against Wasteland, because they can't, you know, waste your red or whatever and, you know, bury, your, uh, bury you. And we saw a ton of duels and Wastelands from Marshall, so uh, I would imagine that's coming in as well. Yeah, when you're this four-color deck, I think it's pretty easy to think, okay, I can try to do a Wasteland lock with Life from the Loam. Yep, and we exactly. have seen... A lot of rug decks in the past play just one life and loan to kind of be like a little miser's card. They can also find it when they have Brainstorm and Ponder and, you know, Singleton Thought Scour as well targeting themselves. So uh, it's not out of the ordinary to actually find that card through, uh, through the manipulation and lets you actually craft a different game plan. Exactly. Uh, here on the other side, Chris Marshall, we see the Force of Wills in the sideboard, uh, you know, something that's finally caught on in the past couple mm -hmm. years. It took a long time, but um, the sideboard and Force of Wills definitely the uh, the cool thing to do nowadays yeah. it seems uh, so those are in the board uh, some of those might come in I mean you know at, we've seen the control decks with a lot more card advantage be willing to take the hit on the card advantage from the force of will for the tempo uh, that it allows you to sort of get like 
a Tarmogoyf or a submerge on your Tarmogoyf, you know, those types of plays that are really, really tempo positive for the opponent. Um, you know, you're willing to take a hit in the card advantage department because you have so much more than your opponent and so many more high impact spells that uh, what really is uh, crucial is to get to the point where you can take over. Sure. And taking a card advantage hit early for a little tempo isn't the worst thing, so uh, wouldn't mind seeing those. Would also understand if they stayed on the board because, you know, it does hurt a little when you have to, like, force a little one one for one, you know? Uh, and then we also see Abrupt Decays. Those are definitely coming in. As we said, Tarmogoyf is the most important card, and to uncounterably kill it is quite nice. Uh, Caracas, Jace Bellerin, probably not coming in. Umazawa's Jete, probably not coming in, but, you know, it, it is a possible, like, theoretical thing you could bring in. A little bit slow, especially when you can't search for it with Stoneforge Mystic. Yeah. You know, it doesn't have access to that card. His White Splash is pretty much just for Swords of Polishers, so I don't really love that. Yeah, I, I would say that that card is more for the Mother Bruins decks or, like, Elves and Goblins yeah. rather than, um, than these aggressive decks with more robust creatures. Engineer Plague, pretty much the same. Disenchant, no real targets for Pakula. A Thoughtseize, not the best against uh, these aggressive decks. Uh, and Surgical Extractions, also not so, so great. So not much changes, probably just a couple of abrupt decays for Chris Marshall. So Pakula's going to start off with a Delver of Secrets on turn two, led off with the Polluted Delta. Has the Delver now. You see uh, you see Chris Marshall's hand. He's got Dark Confidant, Swords of Plowshares, a Vendillion Click. Just wants to get that mana base online and rolling. So Pakula's going to look at the top card of his deck. It is a miss. It is another Delver of Secrets. But well, the first one can come in. Yep. I have to say that Pakula's line in the first couple turns of like waiting a turn to play the Delver and then playing the Delver and leaving out the mana and not get cracking the pass, it's just like reeks of stifle. Yeah. So and Marshall, you know, sniffs that out. It's pretty obvious. So he is not cracking his fetch until he absolutely needs to, or uh, can somehow minimize the damage, uh, you know, choke Pakula's mana on a key turn, etc. So there's Dark Confidant, and now is going to reveal for Delver. He's going to reveal for one at a time, it looks like here. And this is actually huge, because if he flips both these Delvers, I actually caught a glimpse of a rough tumble in mm -hmm. Pakula's hand, which now that the Delvers are, are um, insectile aberrations, they are flying, so the rough side of rough tumble no longer hits it, only two damage to non-flyers, so you can take out the Dark Confidant without having to <laughs> kill both of your own Delvers, yes. which obviously isn't ideal. So people wonder why uh, why they aren't just playing Pyroplasm, and here's why. Yes, the yeah. exact scenario. Yes. It's not because, you know, maybe in some in some games they cast Tumble. Yes. No, it's, <laughs> it's I'd just, like to be a part of a game where they cast Tumble. With that would like, be awesome. They, the deck only has, like, actual, like, I don't know, uh, three, six, like, like ten actual lands. Yeah. Like, I need six of those. Take down your dragon. <laughs> so we're going to see a Ponder here from Picula. Interesting sequencing. Wonder what, what uh, I mean... I have to think that he has Stifle here, um, or at I least see. paint yeah, a beautiful we picture. Yeah, we, I mean, we see the Stifle Okay, now. it is Stifle, yeah. So, uh, I, I have to assume that uh, the turn... Oh, Submerge. Sure, I mean, what's he going to do next turn? Stifle, yeah, we got Stifle coming right there. Yeah, get that out of here. Submerge that, you get no land, and I get to get in for six, and you don't have a white source. And then, like, what's he going to do? Not cast his Dark Confidant, yeah. and then he can tumble it next, or uh, rough it next turn? Yep. Some nice sequencing here. Here comes the underground sea, and as you said, is he going to cast Bob again? He also has that Vendilli click in his hand. You see the couple copies of Source of Plushers. He needed that fetch line to be able to find them, but he doesn't have it. So Pico is going to draw a card. He draws a Ponder. See, look at look how much better again. Submerge would be on the Vendillion. So you could have, you know, ru uh, roughed the Dark Confidant, saved the Submerge for this turn. Well, he has not a lot more damage. He does. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Wasn't that interesting? And submerge that one too, with the effect on the stack. So you see Chris saying decide what he wants to do with that Vendillion Click ability on the stack. If it targeting him is fine, because he does have a Brainstorm in his hand. So, you know, he's looking at his hand saying, am I okay with this happening or not? Seems like, you know, yeah. He says, he says I'm good with it. My hand's actually quite good. Yeah, and quite resilient yeah. to a Vendillion click. Like, it doesn't really matter what you take. Like, if you take the, the rough to protect your Dark Confound, like, you're just going to die. If you take one of the cantrips, it doesn't really matter. Like, they're going to cantrip anyway, and I have another. Mm -hmm. Like, definitely agree with uh, not doing anything there. Wait until the end step to brainstorm to make sure that you can close it out. Um, I really like the way that Pakula sequenced this game. 
So now we're going to see a brainstorm here in the second main phase. Look at a couple cards, put a couple back. Those have the fetch land and polluted delta to be able to uh, clear away and make this a great brainstorm instead of a mediocre one. There's a wasteland. Take care of Bayou. And a days in hand. So the, the window of things, relevant things that uh, Chris Marshall can do here is quite small. Because, um, you know, he would need to have basically another green source plus uh, abrupt decay mm -hmm. or like a white and, you know, the source of the we know about. Blue Delta sacrificed. Gonna clear that brainstorm, <laughs> gonna cast it in the mongoose, and we're looking at uh, what is close to a lethal attack. Um, Gonna count the graveyard here, tap that tropical island, which he does do, and he is over threshold. Yep. And Marshall's going to pick it up. So Pico is gonna tie this one up after a very well played game. We'll be going on to game number three here in round seven. If you're wondering what a uh, game looks like where Rug Delver executes its game plan that it's we've been that talking one. about so much, yeah. that's the one. Yeah. Uh, you know, tie up their mana, choke their mana, um, and just apply a ton of pressure early, tempo positive plays, and get the opponent dead. Very rarely um, in like standard do players die with like six cards in hand. Mm -hmm. You know, lands in play, six cards in hand, they just didn't have time to play. Yeah, unless they got mana screwed, that's about the only time that happens. Yeah, exactly. But uh, Rug Delver makes you mana screwed, and uh, that's what we saw there. Rough Temple is an interesting choice. Takes out Dark Confidant, Snapcaster Mage, and Deathrite Summon. I mean, it's a nice, uh, it, nice two-up to have in the sideboard. It's got a lot of applications across the format, too. As you said, combo elves, goblins. Pyroclasm effect is actually quite good in Legacy for the same reasons that a uh, Tarfire effect is actually quite good. <laughs> you know, just like, I mean, two damage is actually just a good thing to be doing in Legacy. And if you can do two damage across the board yeah. um, against certain decks, I mean, it really... All of it your really, guys are not mine. Yeah, it really <laughs> cuts up these tribal decks Absolutely. Uh, in a big way. You know, the only one that it doesn't really slice and dice up is Merfolk because the Lords work so well with each other. But I, I think that, you know, the Rug Delver deck is actually pretty good against Merfolk because of cards like Lightning Bolt. Yeah, you saw Bolt like and that. Blasts. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and that is uh, definitely the type of game that uh, Marshall is going to try to avoid happening. As I said, winning the die roll, absolutely huge. Being on the play for game three is Chris Marshall going to try and get his mana base established so he can play his more powerful, higher impact cards. So Marshall being on the player is probably a big, pretty big deal again. So that he, you know, when when Rug is on the play, they're able to get those mana denial strategies online. Stifle, get a clock in play, get your stifles in line, turn your dazes on from being, you know, good to great. Yeah. You know, everything favors Rug Delver when it's on the play. It's how it plays when it's on the draw. When the opponent actually gets to do something like go turn one, you know, fetch land, crack them. Let's worry about a stifle play a death right shaman like we saw in game one. You better bolt this now, or I'm going to get a big man advantage against you, which you don't want anyone to be doing against you in the first place. Yeah, absolutely. Being able to like play a land and death right on the first turn before the Rogue Delver player has anything is just like. Wasting the land is horrible, like, bolting the death right is horrible, playing a threat is really bad, yep. like, you know, it's just completely uh, optionless, you know, no, no really profitable plays, you have to, you're already digging yourself out of a hole, when all they did was play a Birds of Paradise. Yeah, yeah. Which is uh, really saying something yeah. for, for the power level of Death Rush Shaman. Yeah. Where it and, changes how much you have to play. And the, the volatility of the Rug Delver deck. You know, it's one of those decks that it's uh, like win percentage fluctuates wildly, like by tens of percents, whether it uh, wins the roll or not. Both players happy with their seven. Chris Marshall here. Marshall's on six, actually. He's on six? Thank yes. you. Um, he's going to go Tropical Island into Bayou in the pass. Thought Scour's going to turn over a Delver of Secrets and a Rough Tumble. Going to give Chris a brand new one. Draw his card for the turn. There's a Flooded Strand. You see Piccolo keeping up Stifles like crazy in this matchup. Yep, he's got Brainstorm, Stifle, uh, Daze, Submerge, and I think a Tarmogoyf. Yeah, I think he has a Tarmogoyf as well. Lots of options, and he chooses to pass. He leaves up Stifle and can Brainstorm Fetch here. Mm -hmm. um, leaves his options open. He has the Rough Tumble for that uh, Death Rite Shaman. He can also Brainstorm looking for a Bolt, a much more mana efficient answer. And that looks like what he's going to do. Mongoose and another fetch land and something else. So, now you're at the point where, like, yeah, I can kill the death right. But he's already at two mana and this fetch lands that I have to, like, hold up Stifle to deal with for the rest of the game. And if I spend my turn, like, rough tumbling, 
is is that going to lead to a favorable position? And he feels like he can stone rain him out and um, goes for the uh, the rough. So two damage, get that death right shaman out of here, sacrifice that. Pinkula obviously cannot reach fast enough <laughs> for that flooded strand. Stifle that business. Oh, that's so disheartening yeah. as the as the bug player when you crack your fetch and there's like I have responses. Yeah. <laughs> Don't even think about it. <laughs> get that out of here. And one mana stone rain, still pretty good. Umzo's Jute, so he did bring it in. And Marshall actually kind of induced there a little bit, sacrificing the fetch land. Now he's going to search with this next fetch land, and he has a Liliana of the Veil in his hand, which is quite a good card against Pikula's deck, as it is typically a singleton threat deck. Yeah. Normally the threats are out one at a time, be it a Tarmogoy, a Mongoose, or a Delver of Secrets. It's very difficult for that deck because they only have 12 to be able to put out multiple threats at once. Yep. But if you go with Umazawa Jite, I am very surprised That is that. surprising. Uh, you know, with no creature to equip the Jite, it's not really even a plan yet. You know, Liliana and upticking there uh, really puts Bakula's draw to the test. Like, can you muster a bunch of guys, and especially with Decay, even if Bakula is able to play two creatures, you go Decay your Tarmogoyf, Edict your Mongoose, yeah. with your Liliana still at two, and like, you know, a handful of cards where you're you're kind of grinding your opponent down with a higher impact library. Seems like uh, that would be a pretty good spot, but trying to go for the the higher risk Umzawa's Jite line, and if he can get that online, it's quite good. But otherwise, it is, uh, you know, he, he might end up kicking himself for not just playing that Lily when he could once it gets, you know, spell pierced or whatever. So now Abrupt Decay is going to take care of Tarmogoy. If you see people kind of taking a look, he might just smirk his own guy, which is actually what's going to happen. Cute. So a little bit of card disadvantage, but he, his thought process is basically that this card is far too important for me to let die to an Abrupt Decay. And he's just going to pass the turn back with four mana available as Marshall's going to draw and play a Lily. I'm going to be, it looks like he's playing around Spell Pierce a little bit here, is what maybe his thought process was. So now Liliana's going to go down. And this is going to get stifled Sti for that's sure. That's going to get stifled, yep. yep, which is a pretty gosh darn good stifle target. So Absolutely. one tap, draws Tarmogoyf, take care of Liliana, follow up, play the Tarmogoyf, kick it back. Trade stifle for a Liliana? Yes, please. Absolutely. <laughs> Tarmogoyf the draw here for Marshall. He is empty handed. Pretty much the best possible for him there. You yep. know, something huge that he can put the jit on. Um, and even if Pakula set tried to do the, you know, attack my Goyf into your Goyf and bolt to finish yours off. The G uh, Umazawa's Jite counters can finish off the coolest Tarmogoyf, and then you're sort of at an uh, uh, even game with, uh, you know, Mongoose versus a Jite with a counter where any creature really stabilizes. So we're going to see a block, and we're going to see some trading here, and the Jit is going to take care of the Tarmogoyf. So the Jit counter has one left. Marshall just drew a land for the turn, and now no Mongoose. Get on in there. That's what that's gonna need to do. What does a mongoose sound like? Th exactly how I did. I was gonna, I was gonna, I was gonna make a mongoose sound effect, but I literally don't know what that is. And so Inquisition of Kozlek off the top. Man, Pukula taking a look. Days and Stifle, both of those cards pretty poor right now. Yep. Taking the Stifle, you know, basically doesn't want anything to happen with Jace. You know, but Days is very, very poor right now, and Pukula needs to actually ride, and this is a pretty big top deck. <laughs> yeah, draws that a Nimble mongoose. That is so good that I actually immediately looked at Chris Marshall's cyborg for like a uh, parish or something. Yeah, engineered explosive, yeah. something like that. Drew another land for the turn, did Marshall. Now Marshall's at three. He can bump himself up to five. What's the draw step this turn? He draws a ponder. The redraws. Need a little again. bit of help. Hit one, <laughs> hit two, hit three. Not there. Swords of Plowshares, Wasteland, and Inquisition go back. He's gonna need a the nice shuffle. Wheel. <laughs> Chris Marshall, come on down. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Liliana is like one of the cleaner answers to the Mongoose, but since he didn't do it while Pakula was tapped out, he was able to uh, get it low enough, or, you know, it was already low, oh, and there's the hand, yeah. that the uh, the stifle on the Edict was able to protect the Mongoose, the Mongoose was able to then attack the Liliana back down, and the uh, Submerge My Own Tarmogoyf, not a play you see very often, but, I mean, every time we've seen these matchups, oh wow, look, look at how happy Pakula is to win that. And, and I'm sure his phone is blowing up. Yeah, I mean, the one thing he said that you said at the top is he really wanted to win uh, so that he could qualify for the Invitational in Somerset. That's at the back end of July, and it looks like he might be able to double draw.